Like the channel has said on multiple occasions, Britain, upon her entry in the First World War, asked her various colonies around the globe to secure and occupy various German overseas colonies. India was tasked with double duty. Not only was she to ship a bulwark of men and resources to France, but also to capture German East Africa. A brigade was sent to Mombasa to bolster the British forces in British East Africa, Indian Expeditionary Force C, which amounted to a brigade of soldiers with various artillery and machine gun brigade assets. Video about them below. But the force made to assail the German colony was Indian Expeditionary Force B. Mobilized on the 10th of September, 1914, the best way to describe Indian Expeditionary Force B is a light British infantry division. A typical British division had three infantry brigades and divisional support. This expeditionary force only had two infantry brigades, the 27th Bangalore Brigade and the Imperial Service Brigade, with various assets. 27th Bangalore Brigade under Brigadier General Wapshire comprised of the 2nd Battalion, Loyal North Lancashire Regiment, 101st Grenadiers, 63rd Palmancotta Light Infantry, and the 98th Infantry. The 63rd and 98th had been transferred from the Southern Jublapur Brigade. Meanwhile, the Imperial Service Brigade was under Brigadier General Thai, comprised of the 13th Rajputs, 2nd Battalion, Kashmir Rifles, half of 3rd Battalion, Kashmir Rifles, half of 3rd Battalion, Gwalior Infantry. The Kashmir Rifles and Gwalior Infantry were Imperial Service troops from the British Raj, Indian Princely States. Indian Expeditionary Force B assets included engineers from the 61st King George's Own Pioneers, A Company from the Ferdy Cot Sappers and Miners. Artillery was comprised of the 28th Mountain Battery of six guns. Railroad troops from number 25 and number 26 railroad companies, plus expeditionary staff and around 2,000 camp followers, under the command of temporary Major General. Arthur Aiken. Both Brigadiers Wapshire and Ty met their divisions the day and six days before departing, respectively. The only units with combat experience was the 101st and 13th, having done security duty in the northwest frontier. To bring the 63rd Palmancotta up to strength, they had had to draft men from the 83rd Infantry, making half the unit from a different regiment, the mixture of men only coming together on the day of embarkation. The units were even using a mixture of different small arms. Being a defensive army for internal security of the British Raj colony, many of these units had successfully operated with older equipment and firearms. The older Boer War era Longleys were replaced by the modern SMLE while in transit over the Atlantic Ocean. Only two units of the expeditionary force had a pre-war machine gun detachment, the 101st and 61st. The remainder of the Bangalore Brigade and the 13th Rajputs were only issued and learned how to use their machine guns while in transit. The Imperial Service units did not utilize the machine guns, telephones, and their officers used rifles as they had no means to acquire pistols. The convoy carrying the expeditionary force left Bombay on the 18th of October, 1914. For many of the Indians, this would be their first time out at sea. Fourteen men under Captain Logan of the 2nd Loyal North Lanks took charge of two three-pounder naval guns, making them land carriages while at sea. The unit was called Logan's Battery, and would do good work during the campaign to come. The plan was for this force to take the vital German port of Tenga, bypassing the German bases and defenses around Kilimanjaro and the German-British border. Then, using the Germans' own rail system, surround and cut off the bulk of the German units in the region. But on the 3rd of November, history would have other plans.